we're going to check the installed height of our springs. So the head will still be bare at this point. Start with a valve. And the reason we're doing this is because um, these valves are new and so they might have, after the lapping process, they might sink into a different depth or the valve stems might be a different length, etc. So you install the valve like this and you'll want, the tool you'll want to use is a machinist scale like this. It's got, it's very durable because it's stainless steel and it's got measurements down to 30 seconds of an inch. Now our springs that we're using have an installed height of 1.8 inches, which is just a couple of thousandths over one and 25, 30 seconds. So we can use one in 25, 30 seconds to verify that our installed height is no greater than the recommended 1.8 inches. And we wanna hit that number primarily for two reasons. If it's too low, the coil will bind before you reach max valve lift and that'll cause failure. And if it's too high, you won't have the spring load and full uh, spring pressure when the valve is open. So you wanna be as close to that number as possible. So one in 35, excuse me, one in 25, 30 seconds is what we're looking for. The way we measure it is we install the valve and we install our spring retainer temporarily with the keepers. And if you just pull back on it, they'll seat tightly and stay in the same place. Then you can measure using the machinist scale uh, you can see that we're at uh, three thirty seconds off of two inches. So doing that math, and we know we want to be at 25, 30 seconds, so 32 minus 25 is 7. That means we need a thickness of 4, 30 seconds for our shim and uh, spring retainer package. So we can select our th shims, measure the thickness of our retainer and our shims to achieve that. So I'm going to set this back up over here. So and we'll take the, the shim pack and spring pocket retainer that we think will get us where we want to go. Place it over the guide, place this in here, and you can buy packages, kits of these uh, spring shims from you know, Summit or Jags or wherever, so you have the assortment that you need. All right, and then we're going to measure to make sure we did our math right. So we put this on here. And hopefully that'll focus to show us that we are one thirty second over one and three quarters, which is one in 25, 30 seconds. And now we know we've got the correct, we will have the correct spring preload. So now we can go ahead and install the Viton seal. Now that we have all of the shims installed along with the uh, Viton seals, we're going to install the full spring package with the retainer, valve spring retainer and the keepers. So in order to do this job, you'll need a valve spring compressor. This is a classic C-clamp style valve spring compressor. And you can place the head in a number of orientations. It just depends on uh, the exact configuration and uh, which valves you're working on. So the ones on the end, you can usually just lay the head on the bench this way. If they're toward the middle, that can be harder because the, the head wants to fall off the end of the bench. Um, and you'll have to manipulate the C-clamp often, the valve spring compressor often, in order to get the keepers installed. Make sure you adjust the head so that it just gives you a little bit of clearance on your retainer so it doesn't slip off. Of course, we're safety glasses during this process. There's a lot of energy here. So ins install the retainer side first and then slowly bring the bottom side up to the head of the valve. Sometimes it takes a few tries if it's going crooked on you. 
and you can see that sometimes it, it wants to move around. So you have to use your body to place a torque on it. Carefully install keepers and manipulate the C-clamp, the valve spring compressor as necessary. Get them to slip into the lock position and then slowly release. I'm releasing now. And you can see that it's fully seated. Um, it'll be pretty obvious if it doesn't fully seat. So just make sure it looks like it's flush along with the retainer. Okay, at this point, we're ready to install the head, the heads on the block. Um, a couple of notes. Uh, first, of course, make sure that you just mock everything up, make sure everything looks right, that the gaskets that you ordered appear to match all of the holes for the water jackets, bolt holes, etc., board diameters. It will slide nicely over the dowels. Make sure your dowels are installed into the block. Um, have your head bolts ready to go and all cleaned up of any gunk that might have been on the threads. The shorter ones on the Ford 5.0 block go into the water jacket, so you'll want to use black non-hardening silicone on those. Um, so just put a little bit on there before you thread them in. And then you'll want to use engine assembly lube on the longer bolts. I'm going to be using some copper gasket sealer on the head gaskets uh, to help with the heat transfer process and it can sometimes aid in removing the head in the future. So make sure you clean the head and the block with carburetor cleaner. Make sure any oil or residue is off there, both sides. And I'm going to go ahead now and just spray this over in some open air. Also note that some head gaskets have a front and a rear. Depending on their design, it'll be marked. If there is, make sure you orient them properly when you install them. Okay, and then you can grab the head by the exhaust and intake ports and line up the dowel on both sides because you want to come straight down on the head gasket. Okay, so the head is now sitting flush and we can begin to install our bolts. So I will lube up the long ones with engine assembly lube, put the non-hardening silicone on the short ones, and then torque them in sequence. Three steps per usual, just like the main caps from the center outward, spreading the load until you get to the final torque specification for all the bolts. All right, so they're just all snug, no appreciable torque on any of them. Now we'll switch to our torque wrench and just set it to about a third of the final four. So we'll tighten up the ratchet to the next torque level. Go back around again and then set the final torque and all of them. And once the engine is fully been assembled and run and warmed up and cooled down, you'll want to go back through and retorque all of them to the final torque specification because settling can occur. So I'm going to go ahead, finish torquing this side, I'll install the head on the other side, and then we'll move forward with installing the valve train.